Today we have a couple stories for you. This is going to be a video that does not contain rumors. I know, believe it or not, we actually do make content like that when news happens. And that's because we have two major stories to go over that regard Nintendo on the whole as a company. One of them is massively positive for Nintendo because, well, uh, it's just really good for the company. The other is, well, not quite that great. In fact, it is a bad story, but one that requires context that we're going to provide you that shows maybe the story isn't quite as bad as it initially seems. So our very first story, we're going to jump right in. Nintendo is the richest company in Japan again. So you see we're over here on this Japanese website, uh, Tokyo Kaizai. I, look, I, I can't really pronounce this. So the top two companies are among the 300 rich companies ranking over 1 trillion yen. And again, this is translated from Japanese to English with machine learning, so not going to be a perfect translation, but we already have all the details broken down. We'll get to that in a moment. So here's the thing. It says Nintendo ranked first in Japan with 1.7186 trillion yen. So that is really all we're looking at this article for. This is just the direct source of this information. We'll link it down below. But if you want to know what that really means, Nintendo has 11 billion dollars usd in a bank that is why they're the richest company in japan but that's not the only reason you see every other company on this list on the entire list of all the companies in japan the richest companies in japan all of them have significant amounts of debt nintendo is the only company on the list to operate with zero debt that's right nintendo doesn't owe anyone anything they don't borrow money from anyone they are literally after taxes 11 billion dollars sitting in a bank this is the way nintendo has been operating for a long time and they're one of the only major multi-billion dollar corporations to operate in this way and this is what enables them that, that despite the fact they don't have the sort of revenue flow that say one of their competitors does with sony and playstation well they might not have 9.3 billion dollars in gaming revenue the last fiscal quarter nintendo actually profited more money a net profit way higher than what Sony was able to do with PlayStation 5. And again, this is what happens when you not only have your game budgets under control and aren't overspending on games in comparison to sales, it also just goes to show that sometimes borrowing money has negative consequences. You gotta pay back that money literally every single month. You're paying interest rates, you're paying all this other stuff. Nintendo doesn't have to worry about that. They literally just, we have the money, we buy it. We don't have the money, we don't. It, 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 it's that simple. And this level of financial uh, security, I guess is, is probably one way to say it, has actually been why Nintendo has been able to sustain during periods when the company wasn't doing so hot. The beginning of the Wii U era, that first couple of years, the 3DS was obviously the lowest selling handheld at the time. It was struggling a little bit. The uh, Wii U was obviously just a complete failure all around for Nintendo. In the end, that led to Nintendo actually losing money for the first time ever as a video game company. Two straight years where Nintendo actually lost money. And you know what was able to help them sustain? Sure, the leadership of Satura Awada and obviously him saying, hey, we're not going to fire anyone. We're just going to lower all our corporate salaries. That was really cool. But also Nintendo was never in danger in the first place because they had at the time... $10 billion sitting in the bank. Now, Nintendo did dip into these coffers. They absolutely did to float themselves during these, you know, down periods. They also took a lot of that money and used it to invest in other things like Denna and that partnership. There's an investment there from Nintendo. They've also since then invested in Universal and other things that Sony technically now in the film industry. So Nintendo is investing their money. And despite this, and despite sinking below $10 billion heading into the Switch era, they are now $11 billion strong in continuing to grow that bank while never actually going in debt. So people wonder like, Hey, how does Nintendo do this? One, they value their employees and think you're in a down period. You actually need your employees to help get you out of it. So that's just a corporate philosophy. But also, Nintendo maintains, remember, they were named the richest company in Japan back in 2020. So this really feels like they're maintaining that status because they just don't operate at debt and they just make way more profits than a lot of other people in their space. So kudos to Nintendo. And now we have to get into what's going to be viewed as a bit of a negative story. And this deals with 
the stock for Nintendo. Now, again, I, this is totally, these are really corporate business-related things. But if you remember, we had this story all the way back in January where Game Rant and others were reporting that Nintendo stock prices hit a new high. Now, I'm bringing this up for context because... Clearly, that's not the story today, but I want to bring this up because I think it paints a picture that is much better than it may appear in the headlines. So if you go down here, you'll see like with the success of Major Mario Zelda 2023, Nintendo hit an all-time stock high value of 7,359 Japanese yen. So this is talking about the Japanese uh, stock exchange, and that's approximately $52.15 per share USD. And all of this, you can see the peaks here, you can see the chart. Uh, all of this was because of essentially people anticipating the release of Nintendo Switch 2. You know, stock investors anticipating the release of Nintendo Switch 2. And that's really what this is mostly about. You had the movie stuff combined with that because, look, the Switch is actually coming off its worst holiday than it's had since the system came out. So obviously, Switch is probably on the brink of having its lowest sales year uh, coming up. The next fiscal year is going to be probably the lowest sales year of Switch. So that is the story, and that is really cool until you look at today when now we have this headline popping up everywhere. Nintendo sinks after game makers say Switch 2 is pushed to 2025. And what you see in this article is that Nintendo shares tumbled as much as 8.8%, which is the lowest mark Nintendo has lost in a single day. And this was after game makers were told the company was pushing back Switch uh, the launch of Switch successor to the beginning of next year. So essentially what happened is Nintendo's stock prices were overly inflated based on rumored expectations. Uh, so Nintendo's stock was actually flying way higher than it should have been because Nintendo's actually coming off their worst sales period. So they really shouldn't be as high as they were. They should still be pretty high, especially compared to the beginning of the Switch era, right? Like, they should be way higher than back in 2017, but they shouldn't have been peaking to all-time highs. So here's what I'm going to tell you, and, and this is something that I haven't seen listed in any other article. To me, this is what's referred to in the stock exchange world as a market correction. Nintendo was overly inflated in the stock market based on false promises that did not come from Nintendo, but instead came from insiders and leakers, leading to purchasing decisions with the stock without actually any data or any direct indication from Nintendo. Basically, investors were making a prediction and a bet, and they lost that bet. And, well, at least they think they lost that bet. Not like we really know what Nintendo's going to do. And so a bunch of them bailed out so they didn't lose a bunch of money in the upcoming year on their stock. So, yeah, this is just what's, a, what's known as a stock correction. And is it the largest sink in Nintendo history? Sure. Does it sink the value of the company? I mean, yeah, sure. Nintendo is worth less today than it was a week ago, but that doesn't really mean anything. We just got done saying Nintendo's the richest company in Japan. Like, they're doing very well for themselves. The stock is always going to be volatile. Look, I'm not saying you can't make money on Nintendo stock. You just got to buy it when it's low, which will probably be, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is the, as low as it's going to get. We'll see. I'm just saying that Nintendo is okay, and this story often misses the context on a lot of these places that the stock was overly inflated in the first place based on the idea that Switch 2 would come out this year rather than Nintendo actually announcing it, which would cause the stock to rise. So that's all I want to say. I think this makes perfect sense, and uh, a stock correction is what it is. This, to me, only becomes a bigger story if it continues to sink more and more and more. Like if it, it, let, Let's say we get to summer and the stock has sunk over 50%. That definitely is a very negative sign from, stock, from shareholders. Highly doubt that's going to happen. Nintendo stock is often not that volatile in the first place, and Nintendo is still the richest company in the trend and ranking in money hand over fist. So I don't really think that we're going to foresee a future anyways where the stock really sinks that much. Uh, but who knows? If with a lean year, let, let's say Nintendo Switch 2 is not announced this year, this direct comes up, it disappoints, and let's say there's a very lean year from Nintendo, who knows? Maybe the stock will dip at over 50%. And I'm going to tell you right now, if that happens, and I'm not a financial advisor, I personally will be picking up some Nintendo stock because I kind of believe that might be as low as it gets, and then we'll... Uh, peak back up during Switch 2 and the Zelda movie and the new Mario movie and new theme parks. And before you know it, uh, Nintendo's back on top of the world. And 
Maybe I'll cash out all my stock but one, just so, just so I own one little piece of Nintendo. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nintendo Rebel Gents, and I'll catch you in the next video.